Hi, I'm Sunil Chilakuri from Refresh Dermatology, coming back to talk about advances in energy-based devices. We have a lot of new tools that have come into the market, and I want to share some of the latest and greatest that really allow us to give a non-surgical facelift and neck lift using these combination of tools. The interesting part is to see how it's changed the paradigm of what we can do. In the past, up until recently, quite frankly, I used neuromodulators and fillers as a first gateway type procedure to encourage the patient to gain trust in what we can do and then go after the skin or re-enhancing re the overall features of that patient. With the latest that we have, I find that we can offer better tools with energy-based devices before we go in and add structural support in most cases. In some places, you're going to find there's such descent of the fat pattern, you're going to find that there's such a, a deficit in certain fat pads that you may have to add structure first. But let me share with you some of those advancements that we have here in 2022. As you can see, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different companies and all of these companies have allowed us to bring new technologies into the market that give us the opportunity to enhance our patients' cosmetic lives. When we talk an overview of the energy-based device that we currently have, you can see we have a wide variety going all the way from surgery, going down to something more recent, talking about the plasma pens that have been reintroduced. It's not a new technology, it's just been reintroduced. And I'm a little bit cautious about that technology right now because we're still seeing quite a bit of hypopigmentation in both anywhere from skin type one, of course, to skin type six as well. Let's talk a little bit about lasers versus fractionated radio frequency technology. When you talk about a laser, it's a single wavelength of light, and oftentimes you're limited to the depth that it can penetrate into the skin. When you're talking about an NDAG laser, that goes about the deepest that we can penetrate. That's anywhere from 1.2 to 1.7 millimeters under the skin. If you're talking about a fractionated radio frequency device, fractionated because you're not involving the entire epithelium, you're putting tiny needles in and using different types of devices, some with insulated, some with uninsulated needles, we're able to very specifically place that energy inside the skin. The biggest difference occurred in 2020 when I stopped using a lot of these ablative devices. And the reason is we didn't know what was going on with this coronavirus. And we knew that some of the airborne particles could possibly lead to complications. So at that time, I was involved with an in-mode research study showing what's the amount of plume that comes up by using a ablative laser, such as a CO2 resurfacing laser, versus using something like a fractionated radio frequency device where the needles are going in, there's no plume, there's no concern. And this cross it, it's also important when we're talking about the utilization of any of these devices for things like uh, viral warts. So when you have that virus, you're causing an airborne change. Can that affect our respiratory system? Can we catch that virus as well? So this was kind of the predecessor in 2020 that led us to this research, and we're using more of this radio frequency than ever before. But I'm finding also that with the newer technologies, we're able to use it more effectively, and it's all in understanding how it works. The number one thing is to understand that radio frequency is not the same thing as laser. Laser uses the box. That big box is going to generate the energy. Radio frequency is going to use the water component of your skin to allow frictional change that creates heat. That's the biggest difference that's inside there. So radio frequency energy generates inside the skin rather than externally. When you're talking about radio frequency overall, there's a difference between radio fractionated radio frequency, which we're talking about using needles to introduce, and bulk heating. When you talk about bulk heating, there's a lot of different devices that are out there. For instance, there's Stermi Smooth, there's VeloShape, there's UltraShape. You can also use uh, things like Exilus and Exilus Ultra that allow bulk heating. So there's no penetration of the skin with anything. It's just applying that uh, radio frequency current over the skin to then cause the water molecules to start rotating and then create friction that creates heat and then thermal damage. When you're talking about fractionated radio frequency with needles going inside the skin, there's a variety of different ways that this energy can be introduced inside the skin. There's insulated needles, there's both monopolar, bipolar devices, and uninsulated needles, in which case sometimes epidermal cooling is required. And this is uh, something that's changed over the last two years. It's a simple mechanism. 
And all you're doing is you're changing the polarity of whatever that needle is or cross it coming that, uh, putting that plus to the mi minus. So in some of these cases, you have a plate that has all the needles. Let's say there's 26 needles and those needles are going in. And in some cases, depending on which the device is, on that plate, one side is gonna be negative, one side is gonna be positive. So that current is arcing across all of those needles not quite as efficient on the edges as it is on the central needle. So that's something to be aware of. Other devices that were fancier, you're gonna have a, a, a polarity that's in between the two needles. So alternating needles, one needle is gonna be positive, one needle is gonna be positive, a uh, negative, and so the energy is coming from there. Now remember that water molecule is also charged with the positive and negative side. So when the positive gets close to the positive side, the positive side of the rate of frequency gets close to the positive side, of the water molecule that will push it away like a magnet does. So that starts the water molecule to start rotating. So all the radio frequency device that we talk about are definitely dependent on the water content. So sometimes when patients call me or clients call me who are using these devices, so that's uh, physicians, uh, healthcare providers ask me, why did I not get the best results? The first question I have to ask is, how hydrated was that patient? How hydrated was that skin? And so you do have to encourage your patients to have better hydration so that whether it's internally or locally uh, closing up the transepidermal water loss channels to improve the overall hydration of the skin. So again, going back to this diagram, I wanna show two different types of variations that we have more recently. One is focused radio frequency. So what this means is introducing a single one to three needles inside the skin at one sitting in one insertion point and allowing really um, almost like a heat gun. So you're very hyper-focused. You're talking about a smart bomb versus an atomic bomb when you're dealing with the skin. Here's an example of a 56 year old woman who comes in and her chief complaint is she has droopy dog eyes. And she does, she looks more tired in person than she does on this picture here. And so what we found with physical examination, she actually has fat pad herniation. On one side, she had two of these fat pads that are herniated. On the other side, she has three. And you can see there's three major fat pads that come across the lower eyelid. So the medial fat pad, the middle fat pad, and of course the lateral aspect of the fat pad there. So in this case, I'm using this focused radio frequency device to insert individually to generate enough heat to vaporize that fat. And think about it like this. If you put a piece of bacon on, on a frying pan, what ends up happening? The fat, as it gets heated, evaporates, it vaporizes. And so you can see in this video that's, that you're seeing right here, that's the same exact concept that we're utilizing. So a couple of key things here that you need to understand if you decide to use a device like this, and this particular brand is called Agnes. It's the only one that's in the US right now that has a focused radio frequency tip. So it's quite useful for the infraorbital fat pads. I also use it for the uh, descent of the middle fat pad that leads to that little jowl that's there. I use it for the submental area as well. And in some cases, some practitioners are utilizing it for buccal fat, hyper um, removal of some of the buccal fat. But just like that bacon we talked about, when you heat it enough, it's going to shrink that fat. It's going to vaporize some of the fat. So what you do need to understand is this is something, at least in my opinion, that you need a local anesthetic injection. So that's your injectable lidocaine, xylocaine, uh, prilocaine, whatever you want to inject in. You have to let that field get dry. And if any of you do surgery or have worked in the surgical fields, you understand that in a wet field, if you put that, that uh, needle hyphricator or you put that bipolar current, nothing is happening. You have to wet, uh, you have to dry that field to make it effective. In this case, we're using a focused uh, radio frequency monopolar device. And you can see there's a square, a square waveform that occurs and it's an insulated needle. So that insulation, even though this is inserted five millimeters under the skin, the first 2.5 millimeters for some of these tips are insulated. So you have no thermal damage to the uh, epidermis there. They have other tips where you're going to see that there's shorter um, portion of the needle. And so where does that help? That helps more with skin tightening. And with some of these needles, which I'm going to show you in a second, we have a lot of different options. We can treat acne, we can treat serum gomas. And here's two different types of needles that I use quite often on the eyelid area, showing the difference in penetration. That F1 needle is going to penetrate to five millimeters, while the W3A needle is penetrating to approximately 1.5 millimeters. So in this case, you can see there's an overall improvement. It's more visible in person, and there's just an improvement of the overall texture as well as decreased 
um, variation between that, that uh, nasojugular groove that's inside there. Here's an up close uh, picture, and this is one month after one treatment. Here's a case where we're actually tightening the upper eyelid skin. So there's a lot of different applications that, that can be used for this. And again, think about it like using a smart bomb or a um, heat gun. So what can we do? We can vaporize or tighten up some of the skin by putting in small amounts of energy into the skin. And here's an example where we just treated one eyelid. You can get a nice example of what's seen here. And this is after treating just the right upper eyelid and comparing it with the left side where there's very evident dramatic cholesis. This is one month after one treatment here. Other options that we have, we can treat acne, we can treat syringomas, we can treat, of course, uh, uh, under eye bags like we discussed. And all of these needles are gonna be micro insulated. So it's safe to treat just by inserting into the epidermis, but the epidermis is gonna be protected. So in this case, you can treat select, selective sebaceous glands in those areas where somebody has active acne. So pretty interesting how it works. You can change in this particular device, you can change the uh, depth of penetration by which needle you're picking, but you can also change the power and how long the power is inserted onto that needle. Here's a case where we're treating serangomas. Now remember with serangomas and also with sebaceous hyperplasia, you can use something as simple as a hyphricator. So most of you have a hyphricator inside the office somewhere, those needle tips cost about $2 to $3. Each one of these needles costs anywhere from $37 to $59, depending on what it is. One of the other features in this particular device, you can see what the needle tip looks like by inserting it into a little component there. Here's where that I was showing you that we can use it for that little pre-jowl area. And if you listen closely, there's a sizzle. Let me play it again. Where you hear that sizzle, that's the fat that's being destroyed. So I call it the, the sound of success where you're decreasing that fat. And you're gonna see, here's an example of one month after a single treatment session, significant changing in the jowling uh, and the pre-jowl area. So this is my go-to device when we're treating of anybody who might've been a Kybella or deoxycholic acid candidate. The cost of the consumable is $59. I already own the machine and I don't have to pay for each file. So as seen here, you're gonna get an improvement at one month, but over three months, it gets even better. Here's another example. This is a courtesy of my friend, Larry Helwig, who's at Clear Skin Solutions. And this is four months after single treatment. I've created a new protocol where we're utilizing this device as well as a multiple needle RF microneedling device, and we can truly do a non-surgical neck lift. And it's pretty remarkable what can be done. What other non-surgical submental options do we have? Well, of course, we have cryolipolysis. We also have laser-based devices and heat-based devices that can improve. When you talk about the multiple needles that are going in, so that's the fractionated radio frequency device, there's an interesting concept here. And this is a concept that applies across all of the devices. Right now, there's 19 different devices inside the space, and most of them are gonna be about the same as long as the motor works properly and the needle is properly inclined with the sharpness and, and what's going on there. Some of the devices will allow you to change how long the, the energy, the radio frequency is applied internally. And here's what happens with those where you cannot vary it. This is what happens after one single pass where the heat's on for uh, 500 milliseconds. Here's after one second, here's after two seconds, and here's after three seconds. The reason I chose three seconds here is because the original maker of the device or the original device that was in the space was called Profound, P-R-O-F-O-U-N-D. I'm sure many of you have heard of that particular device. That device is still around. They've changed the temperature that it stays, uh, the, the length of time that it activates inside the skin from three seconds to two seconds. And when people talk about a one and done, or it's almost a one and done, you can see by generating this energy deep inside the skin, you're going to actually tighten the muscle because it's causing that contraction. It's going to destroy some of the fat while also causing collateral damage with heat that leads to neocollagenesis. When we talk about the different devices, remember I told you there's 19 different players inside the space. Do all the devices actually go to the depth that's set into there? Well, do you think it's true or false? Unfortunately, it's false. I'm gonna show you an example. This is an Instagram page, it's not my Instagram page. This particular device is literally bouncing off the 
the skin. And so they're so excited, the, the poster of this device. And if you look at it, not even in slow motion, that three millimeters is nowhere near that. So pay attention to the motor of anything that you, you decide. The second thing you're gonna find is that the needles are not exactly the same. So when you look at high power photography, <clears throat> this is just using a little bit, um, um, it's a macro lens. You can see that there's different sharpnesses of each one of these metal alloys. So make sure that you understand what the differences are there and see what happens. Remember I told you about the motor. So you also do have to pay attention to the motor. I'm gonna show you three different types, three different devices all set at the same parameter of 2.5 millimeter step, just using gelatin, old fashioned jello that my mother made for me and put it inside cups for me. So look, all of these are gonna be at 2.5 millimeters. Watch the insertion on the screen and see, there you go, that's a 2.5. Here's the next two devices. And they're not nearly penetrating the way that it should. In the middle device, yes, the motor is getting to that depth, but look what it's doing. It's actually pushing the, some of the skin internally. So what you're gonna notice is the needles are different in that case. It's not just the motor, but the needle, because it has a little bit of microscopic sharp edges, is pulling the skin inward. Unfortunately, and I'll play this, this slide one more time. If you look at the device on the right, it's not even close to penetrating 2.5 millimeters. So again, when you're wondering why there's differences in outcomes between all of these RF micro needling devices, ask your question of how powerful is the motor? What are the needles that are being given to me? And make sure that you're gonna allow success with your patients by picking the ideal device. Here's the case study of a 54 year old woman and she's concerned that she has this loosey goosey neck. And so what other devices can we offer? Well, you can have the radio frequency fr fractionated device like we described, and here's how it works. It's gonna go inside the skin, just like we've talked about, and it's gonna allow penetration at the proper depth. This, is, uh, this happens to be the in-mode device, but there's multiple ones that will get to the proper depth. For the in-mode device, it stays inside the skin and causes activity for a total of 600 milliseconds. So that's one option that you have. Uh, and when you're talking about this particular device, the reason I brought it up is because this is the only device out of those 19 that allows you to go to seven millimeters. And you say, why the heck would I go to seven millimeters? It's only important for body contouring. So this has something called a burst mode. So with one trigger fire, you can actually have it fire in three different uh, parts of the skin or three different depths on the skin from seven millimeters, five millimeters, three millimeters. And there's a second version where you can treat five millimeters and two millimeters, depending on where it is. So the advantage of that, when you have a burst mode, you're creating enough energy inside it that they're going to have some uh, destruction of fat. So here's an example using this on the submentum. You can see there's a nice change inside there. Again, from a frontal view, you can see there's an improvement there. And of course, we talked about having it for full body as well. And so that advantage is it penetrates seven millimeters and then creates energy to eight millimeters in depth. And here's what it looks like. So just give you an example of what it's gonna look like. It's the needles are going inside there and you can see it goes seven millimeters then five millimeters and three millimeters. That's from one trigger point. And there's another way to do it where it goes five millimeters and two millimeters as well. So with this, you're gonna find that you're gonna get some fat destruction as well as skin tightening that's inside there. So here's an example of a treatment that was done across the abdomen. What else do we have inside this space? Well, we talked about the mechanism of action where you have to have enough water content. We can also do an external device where there's no insertion into the skin and we can cause the enough heat that's being generated. So you can use this for both 3D modeling, uh, facial remodeling on the face. This is also a concept from InMode. They're using a device called uh, Evolve, Evoke, Evolve. Evoke, it's Evoke, I apologize, E-V-O-K-E. -E. It's a hands-free hand -free device that's supposed to tighten the skin on the face as well as on underneath the neck. And you also have internal ways of doing this. And this is using an internal probe and allowing us to get the proper uh, temperature. And here's the version that's an external hands-free version. And this improves the overall skin laxity by improving those fiber spans that are in between, strengthening them while also destroying some of the fat that's inside there. So that's something that's new on the market over the last year. You can treat the face, the jowls, and we're seeing pretty good changes with this. With the 
Beauty, this particular device, it has real real time feedback. I know there's going to be one more that's being a different category that's going to allow facial laxity to improve dramatically, as well as the muscle to improve. And I can't talk about it yet, but I hope that you'll invite me back so we can talk about it next year. That this other device that we're talking about should be released hopefully in September. Here's an example of the first device that I was showing you that evoke. And uh, you can see there's volumetric loss as well as the tightening of the skin inside the face. For body applications, what else can we use? Well, we can use that same broad bulk heating to improve the overall skin texture as well as destroy fat. And if you came to any talk that I gave before, we talk about it's not the brand name, but how much energy that you can put over a period of time. So if you can heat the fat to 41 to 47 degrees, really 42 to 47 degrees, and you can maintain that temperature for 20 minutes, you're gonna have programmed cell death, which is called apoptosis. How does radio frequency work in this case? Well, we know that the skin transmits that radio frequency energy 10 times more than the fat compartment. And we know that the muscle conducts it 20 times more than the fat compartment. So if you think about that, there's more water content, both in the epidermis as well as the uh, excuse me, epidermis, dermis, as well as the muscle components there. As a result, where the energy slows down, creating heat is going to be inside that fat. Any questions that I can answer? I hope that you'll reach out to me. You can DM me anytime, and we're happy to share what's coming up in the market and uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Again, DM me anytime on Instagram. My handle is at RefreshDerm. I'm Sunil Chilakuri, board-certified dermatologist from Houston, Texas. Thanks again for joining me.